Seems the most popular ham radio antenna now is the 80 through 10 meter end fed half wave. They're cheap. One antenna covers the HF bands and being fed at the end, they're easy to feed. They're like a pet toad. A pet toad is easy to feed. You only have to feed it every other day. And hams who think using an antenna tuner is a sin brag they can work 80 through 10 meters without a tuner. So you'd think the multi-band in-fed half wave is the greatest thing since the moon pie ballon. Now look, a lot of hams, they love their 80 through 10 in-fed half wave, but it is not the great antenna that they think it is. Now we're also going to introduce you to an alternative to the multi-band in-fed half wave that is similar, but a better overall performer. So let's find out why by consulting with an expert. Now, concerning experts, uh, here's a recent comment on this channel. Why are you quoting experts? All you need to do is be like other YouTube hams, hook up a 100 watt rig, make an SSB contact and say, see how well that works? Why bother with all this factual information and logic? Well, that being said, let's go to a contemporary RF engineer, Yuri Van Doren in Belgium, ON6URE, operator of the RF Guru Company, where he designs and manufactures high-quality antennas and ballons for the amateur radio market. All right, here we are in the RF Guru website, the NFED half-wave 80 through 10 myth, why it is not the magic antenna many believe. We understand the appeal, a single wire, one transformer, and you're on the air from 80 through 10. Many hams swear by the 80 through 10 in-fed half-wave because it, in quotes, works. Often citing the most unscientific denominator in amateur radio, and this drives me crazy, I made contacts. Yes, with enough power and propagation, you will make QSOs on almost anything that radiates. But reality tells a different story. The 8010 in fed half wave is not an efficient all band solution. It is a compromise filled with hidden losses, ferrite stress, and misleading SWR tricks. Now, here we have the myths that are the basis of the all band in fed half wave. Okay, number one, lo one long wire resonates at multiple half wave harmonics. A single 49 to 1 transformer supposedly makes it 50 ohms in all bands. A pretty SWR curve convinces operators it's working well. And contacts prove efficiency, ignoring how much power is lost in heat. Next, we have the physics that break the dream. Don't you hate these scientific facts? The transformer is not wideband. A 49 to 1 in-fed half-wave transformer depends on ferrite cores. But ferrites are frequency selective. A mix optimized for 80 meters runs hot on 10 meters. A mix optimized for 10 meters is lossy on 80 meters. No single ferrite mix covers 3.5 to 30 megahertz efficiently. Core heating, saturation, and winding loss are unavoidable. Copper losses multiply. To cover 80 meters, many turns are wound on the core. On 20 through 10, those turns act like resistors. Skin effect and proximity effect drive loss up, wasting power before it even reaches the wire. Magic capacitors don't create efficiency. 
Now, I'll bet you 10 bucks if you open up your 80 through 10 in-fed half-wave transformer, you'll see this little capacitor in there. Now, what's that for? Some builders add capacitors across the transformer to force SWR dips on higher bands. That dip is usually resonance of the transformer, not efficient antenna radiation. Your SWR meter smiles while your ERP plummets, your effective radiated power. All right, next. Current distribution breaks on higher bands. Above 20 meters, a 40-meter in-fed half wave behaves as multiple half waves in series. Current nodes shift with even a tiny length or height change, making impedance highly unstable. Now, what looks like resonance is often just the transformer reacting, not a clean radiation mode. Yeah, but I measured my transformer, you know, using a VNA and a dummy load, and it measured great. Okay, measurement hides the truth. Back-to-back -back transformer tests, SWR sweeps, and dummy load experiments all ignore real-world stress, reactive mismatch, coax shield currents, voltage breakdown, and thermal rise. Efficiency is only proven when measured in a live antenna system under power. Why the NFED half wave 80 through 10 runs hot, literally. Number one, core losses. That low HF, high magnetizing current heats the ferrite. Saturation. At QRO, the core hits flux density limits, collapsing impedance and spiking heat. Copper heating. Long, thin windings at HF raise AC resistance. And finally, thermal runaway. Poor transformer design lets internal heating exceed 100 degrees centigrade causing loss of permeability and permanent degradation. Now, for all of us Yankees, uh, that is over 200 degrees. Okay, so now, uh, you, know, you know, you might be saying, okay, uh, smarty pants, uh, what's a good alternative? Okay, here we go. Monoband in-fed half waves. Efficient when truly half wave on the target band. Dual band in fed half waves, half wave plus full wave combinations. For example, 160 and 80, 80 and 40, 40 and 20. They work well with proper ratio selection. Segmented solutions use band specific transformers or separate wires rather than one overstressed core and in-fed, off-center fed, and off-center fed designs. They provide broader coverage with lower ferrite stress. Okay, we're getting close to wrapping this up now, so stay with me here. Conclusion, convenience does not equal efficiency. The, the uh, 80 through 10 in-fed half wave is not a miracle. It's a compromise that hides ferrite heating winding loss, and pattern distortion behind low SWR. At RF Guru, we do not use magic capacitors because they don't create efficiency. They only mask loss. If you want a reliable, efficient antenna designed for physics, not myths. Separate bands. Choose the right core mix and avoid gimmicks. Your signal and your ferrites will thank you. And finally, the mini FAQ. Why do many 80-10 in-fed half waves show low SWR? Because transformer plus capacitor combinations resonate, not because the antenna radiates efficiently. Can capacitors make in-fed half waves more efficient? No. They only create SWR dips, masking loss. Why does my in-fed half wave run hot? 
core and copper losses from frequency dependent inefficiencies. What's the efficient NFED half wave sweet spot? Dual band pairs, half wave, full wave combinations with transformer ratios tailored to height and layout. What should I use instead of an 80-10 NFED half wave? Mono band or dual band NFED half waves, off center feds or NFED off center fed designs that respect current distribution. So guys who brag they use an NFED half wave because it's resident, no matching networks for me. Well, as we've just seen, there's a 49 to 1 transformer at the feed point with a dumb little capacitor in it to trick them into thinking it's such a great antenna. Now, in a future video, we're going to talk about those alternatives, the off-center fed and the in-fed off-center fed antennas. A one-wire, no-compromise, all-band in-fed half wave is a myth. Consider subscribing to this channel, ring the bell for updates, and 73.